Hello there, Peter. Hello there. Thank you for coming up to the clinic today. Yes. Peter's been in my clinic for over 10 years um, and has been tremendously helpful over the years. You've helped with research projects, you've helped with teaching with students, and this time Peter volunteered. He asked whether he could help with an upcoming bone marrow biopsy. <laughs> Such a good chap, and Peter actually asked whether he could be filmed having the biopsy as a teaching material, and I must mm -hmm. admit, took me a bit by surprise, Peter. Well, the, if I can help in any way, I've been helped all the way through the past 10 years, so I'd like to, if I possibly, give something back. Well, that's very kind of you. So, uh, Peter's been in the clinic with a blood disorder and has had bone marrow from time to time, and so before we do a bone marrow biopsy, Peter, I, of course, have to talk to you briefly about the procedure and it's good in terms of educational to highlight what we tend to say to our patients. So I tend to say to them, well, it's a not re relatively quick procedure, it doesn't take too long, we don't have to use anaesthetic, we use general anaesthetic, we use local anaesthetic, we don't have to sedate patients uh, most of the time. And we tend to lie people on an examination couch and we ask them to adopt a specific position because I tend to do my bone marrows taking from the back of what we call the superior iliac crest, the back bit of the pelvis. Right. We clean it off, we numb it with anaesthetic and we chat away as we take samples. Fine. <laughs> now there are risks, of course, I have to ask, are you taking any blood thinning tablets? No. no. Um, some people take aspirin, which I'm normally relatively relaxed about. Do yes. you take aspirin? Yes, I do. Okay, well that's all right. Do you have any particular bleeding problems with aspirin? No. Okay. So, because when you do a biopsy procedure, there is always a risk of bleeding uh, and bruising. There is a theoretical risk of infection. I'm not sure we've ever had an infection, but that risk is there. The biopsy, of course, it can be uncomfortable at the time and sometimes pain after the biopsy. So I have to flag that. I tend to say to patients, look, don't do too much exercise for a day or two afterwards. We don't want to trigger a secondary bleed after the event. Is that okay with you? That's fine by me. So we've now got Peter set up. We've got Peter lying in the left lateral position with his legs up. It helps keeping the pelvis square. And we're going to be taking a sample from the posterior superior iliac crest back here. So are you comfortable there, Peter? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Marvellous. Right, we've got ourselves all set up. I've got my trolley made. First step, of course, is cleaning the skin. It's a bit cold. Are you ready? Uh -huh. So cleaning in the middle, then big sweeping circles. Out. It tends to work very quickly. I'll take that out of my sterile field. So we've got somewhere to press. Now, I was told years ago by a very wise registrar when I was learning these, put your hand over the posterior crest and where your thumb lands is basically where we're going to be going. And so you're feeling for that posterior prominence. And of course, it does help. Peter's not got too much padding there, I'd say, Peter. So mm -hmm. that's, we can feel our anatomical landmarks. And the first thing we need to do is put in a little bit of anaesthetic. Are you ready, Peter, for the start no. stretch going? Okay. Clean the skin. Cleaning it. You all right now? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. No discomfort? No discomfort at all. Oh, good man. Not bleeding in the slice, it's got to find the bit that we need to sew. Sometimes people feel it a little bit uncomfortable when you're just putting down onto the crest. Do you feel that at all, Peter? No. No, good man. And of course, one of the skills putting our anaesthetics is that you want to around the area to draw back on your syringe and inject. What I like to do on the posterior crest is to, as if imagine there's a circle, 
and get around this area. Still not feeling anything? No, no. Okay. Still no discomfort? No, no discomfort. Right. The sample we're going to be taking is the aspirate. So I tend to take off, this is the sternal guard that we, of course, only very rarely use nowadays. Since we're going to an area that is anaesthetised. And the key point here is when we're going down onto the bone to just check the patient is still feeling fine. So aiming to go right in the middle of the bit was anaesthetised. So Peter, can you feel that? No. No, good man. Then we're going to just gently insert the aspirate through the periosteum with a bit more pressure. Go through, in we go. Now, you okay there? I'm oh, fine. So when we take off the aspirate sample, of course, some patients do notice this because it puts this negative pressure, so I tend to warn patients. I'm a firm believer in trying to get everything in that very first pull because our colleagues who work in flow cytometry really like this to be a fresh biopsy uh, for the very first sample. You ready, Peter? Here it comes. Mm -hmm. You see that? Was that a bit uncomfortable? No, I'll be feeling it. Straight into the. You see how Peter's dripping a bit there? We're not worried about that. Oh, I've got two slides there. You see how we're making these slides by the bedside rapidly, and that helps us get the best samples for both our morphologists and our flow cytometry team. Now, I'm just going to push on that for a bit. So I'm going to throw away the bits from the first part of the procedure, do a quick glove change before we start with the next part of the procedure. So you still okay there, Peter? Yes, I'm fine. So we're going to come back now and take a trephine core. I tend to clean off the skin for the second time. I'm not sure you really need to, but we'll put that on. Sorry about this, Peter. Cold again. No, it's fine. Again, big circles away. Let's get that out of our field. Our trephine core, so we tend to use a standard uh, centralised trocar core. So that the first central part of the needle, of course, is to go through the periosteum, and then we can take the core. So, now Peter, exactly like last time, we talked about how we've got to just check Get down onto the bone, it's not too uncomfortable for you. So we put the anaesthetic in not too long ago, so that's all going to be neat, nice and anaesthetised, hopefully. Then I have to ask Peter the question. What does it feel like there, Peter? Mm -hmm. Go onto the bone there. Feels nice and solid. I'd like to just sort of walk around a bit to check that we, we're confident we're right in the middle in the solid bit. Just there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you be honest with me? Yes, I'm fine, no problem at all. <laughs> okay, so I'm advancing that in through the periosteum there. You okay? Yes, yeah, fine. And that's the trocar in. Then we remove the central trocar. Put on the little end bung. We've got the size graduations down here, so I'm going to go for a centimetre core. So, Peter, are you all right here? Yes, I'm fine. Okay, you tell me if it's uncomfortable. Pushing that in. Bones, are you all right there? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, so we're less in... uncomfortable than having a tooth filled. <laughs> less uncomfortable than going to the dentist. There you go. Right, now this is the central grabber, which I'm going to put in. Try and grab the core. Now sometimes, I've got to be honest, it can be a bit tricky trying to grab one of these things and it might not come out with us. Is there any discomfort there, Peter? No. And I often say to patients, if we don't get the core, then I ask them how uncomfortable it is and whether we're going to have another go. 
And in Peter's case, actually, getting the core is not critical, but this is at least a video to show the process. So we're going to take that out carefully. I'm just going to push on that, and then I'm going to ask Sister to lean in and just push on that. And we're going to extract our profile. There we go. I tend to pull this out. Now, I know that didn't have much resistance about it, so I'm suspicious the core is not there. Oh, I could be wrong. I don't know if that's blood clot or core. That's just the way it can be, unfortunately. Oh, but it sank to the bottom, so hopefully we do have a bone marrow core in there. So here we have our core. Now, Sometimes there is more blood clot than core, and we are dependent on the chaps in the path lab telling us. But in Peter's case, to be honest, the aspirate is our most important test. So I'm not going to go back and redo that. So I think we'll call the investigation, the test to a close. So Peter, we're all done. Excellent. We're putting some pressure on there and I'll put a plaster on. So Peter's finished the procedure now. There's very little in the way of bleeding there. So I think we'll put on his plaster and... Um, we tend to say to our patients to lie on their back for five, ten minutes just so we can check that the bleeding has stopped. There we go. Right, Peter, we can turn you over onto your back. That's fine. And then you are done. <laughs>